Hi there, Altenew friends, welcome back. I am loving the Altenew scoring board because I can make unique and interesting note card bases. In this tutorial, let's take a look at three modern techniques to step up your gates fold designs. <laughs> Gates fold cards are a really easy way to add some interactivity into your card stash. If you're unfamiliar with gates fold cards, here's a really quick and easy card I made using the gates fold center folding card technique. Of the many gates fold cards that I've seen online, there's at least two main components to them. One of them is a type of cigar band or a band that wraps around the card. And this band holds the card closed before you deliver it to your recipient. And then of course there's the center folding aspect of the card. So if you're new to card making, typically you'll have a side folding or top folding note card base. And in the gates fold technique, both sides are of equal width and then they fold to meet in the center of your card. Of course, you don't need the cigar band or the card wrap around your card, but I think it's a beautiful element for your recipient to anticipate what awaits on the inside of your handmade card. Let's go ahead and start with our gates fold base. In my supply stash, I have the Altenu scoring board. I love this for its smaller profile. It easily stashes away in my crafting drawer. And in the little compartment hidden away at the top of the scoring board is a ball tipped scoring tool. Now I like to supplement my scoring board with the Altenu Teflon bold and folder. And this just gives professional looking creases on your card. The Teflon coating helps eliminate some of that shine that you would if you were to crease with, let's say, this end of a plastic bit. And of course, for your card base, you're going to need your favorite heavyweight card stock. I use a 110 pound white card stock. Over on the coordinating blog post found in the description box, I'll have the written dimensions for your Gates Fold portrait style card base. And the two lines that you'll score for in U.S. Imperial in inches is at 6 and 3 eighths and 2 and 1 eighths. Or by using a Altenew must-have gel pen, you can mark on the plastic just 2 and 1 eighths. Use the ball-tipped scoring tool found in your Altenew scoring board to make your 2 and 1 eighths line. Then you can turn the paper 180 and score your paper one more time at 2 and 1 8. And now that you have your score lines on your note card base, all I have to do is reinforce the folds with my Teflon bone folder. And now what I'm left with is a perfectly scored and folded center fold gate fold note card base. Now that we've learned the basics of what a gatefold card is, now we can start working on some techniques to build really modern and visually interesting card designs. And now in my personal opinion, I don't like to layer a lot of heavyweight card stocks or patterned card stocks on top of my folded note card bases. I think it adds a lot of bulk to the card and most of the time I don't really see much of the pattern once I've started adding focal elements to it. But there's still really stunning and easy ways to add some brilliance to your gatefold cards. So one of the first things I'm going to do, uh, aside from heating up my hot foiling platform, is grabbing the dotted starburst debossing cover die. I'm using this debossing plate in a different way. I've already trimmed down a panel large enough to completely cover the front side of my gatefold note card base. I'm going to have two pieces of satin masking tape ready on my hand while I set the foil on top of the front side of my folded note card base. And then I'm lightly taping down the foil to my folded note card base with the satin masking tape. This also helps hold my folded note card base closed. And then I can take my debossing cover plates with the debossing side facing the front of my card. And once I have my debossing cover plate aligned, I can flip my entire sandwich over so that the plate is touching the hot side of my platform. Then I'll use both my thin shim and spacer pad to layer on top of my cardstock. And after removing the foil from my folded note card base, I'm left with this background. You'll see I have a bit of over foiling. I can easily rub some of this off with an eraser. 
Mine is really worn down. I get pretty good use out of my Altenew stamp conditioning eraser because I also like to use it for removing um, the liquid adhesive I like to use. But this will remove the large spots of overfoiling that I have. So this is what I'm left with on the dotted starburst debossing cover die. And I'm going to set this aside while I work on the focal points of my Gates fold card. New from Altenew for the September 2022 Winter Magic release is the Shrub Rose layering stamp set. It has its coordinating die, and I picked this stamp set in particular because it has outlined components. And then the sentiments in this stamp set fit really nicely onto a sentiment banner. So like I said, I'm going to keep this arrangement really simple. I'm not going to do any sort of complex coloring on this card. And the first thing I've done is taken a panel of brushed rose metallic cardstock. I just used one of the scraps from my bundle. And I white heat embossed the B1 and C1 layers onto the metallic cardstock. And then on a white panel of cardstock, I've gold heat embossed the A1 layer and the berry cluster branch. And then to marry the blush cardstock with the gold embossing, I'm stamping the A4 layer in blush crisp dye ink. That comes from the Red Sunset family of inks. And then with the coordinating, Red Sunset family of Altenew Artist Markers. I'm going to very carefully color in just the berries. Over time, the repeated use of the felt nib on top of embossing will end up fraying it. So I'm careful to not go all the way up to the embossed line. And I'm just very loosely coloring the inside of the berries. So now that I have all of my images heat embossed and stamped, I'll use the coordinating shrub rose die set to cut out all of these images. So to recap, this is what I have so far for my Gates Fold card. Here is my Gates Fold note card base, again with that characteristic center meat. Here are my die cut completed elements to shrub rose. And then off camera, I've die cut this frame. It's one of my favorite Altenew dies. It's the New Day Card Kit Heart Frame Die Set. And then in my scrap drawer, I had one of these small die cut circles. And this is just a scrap piece of white cardstock. So now I'll go ahead and start assembling this card. And this brings me to the second tip I have for creating modern center fold or gate fold cards. I think the temptation is to create a lot of symmetry since everything comes to the middle, but I think it's really important to create a lot of interest and asymmetry when making your gates fold cards. So what I'm first going to do is glue down my gold die cut frame to one half of the fold of the gate fold card. So I'm applying my liquid glue just to half of this die and pressing that directly onto my folded note card base. And the reason why I picked this small circle in my scrap drawer is because it fits in my frame. Yeah, it'll stay hidden underneath my floral focal point, which is the main large rose in Shrub Rose stamp set. So just like the gold die cut frame, I'm going to glue down this circle. And again, just to one of the flaps of your Gates Fold note card base. I've started to glue everything down on the left side of my note card base. And now that I have my circle within the frame, I can start assembling the rows. And my choice of the scrap circle was deliberate because I do want to use a little bit of foam tape but I don't want to accidentally shut this card so that I can't open it. So everything must fit within this inner circle, or at least on this half, the left half of my gate fold card. And again, the importance of that is so that you don't glue shut your card on accident. And this is the segment where I will incorporate some asymmetry. So, so again, my frame is really symmetric. And now the floral arrangement is where I get to showcase some asymmetry while building this card. So now I've glued all my die cut elements to my flower so that all I have to do is apply a little bit of instant dimension foam tape right to the center of that die cut circle. And then on top of the exposed adhesive, I can add my flower. So now you see we've nicely juxtaposed some symmetrical elements with the asymmetric floral arrangement. And in my opinion, I think this creates a really visually interesting Gates Fold card, since the temptation is to really keep both sides of your card symmetrical. I really challenge you to put these two design elements together. But anyway, this is the end result of stamping the die cut elements and the stamped elements onto the centerfold card. And since I picked the left side to glue everything onto, 
As if there isn't enough shine on this card already, I've decided to add a little bit of satin gold to embellish this card background. And usually embellishment is my last step. However, you might notice that I'm actually missing the sentiment to my card. Now I can easily create a sentiment banner and add it to my little framed bouquet, but instead I'm going to incorporate it into the cigar band or the card wrap and use this as another element of interactive interest to the front of my card. And like I said, not everything has to be right in the center of your card. I placed my flowers and other die cut elements in this fashion so that I could put my sentiment banner offset in a way that breaks up the symmetry of the card and makes this a little bit more interesting. In order to make this sentiment banner, I white heat embossed onto a half inch strip of vellum. So that's a half inch by uh, 11 inches. And I overcompensated by quite a lot so that I could play around with the placement of the sentiment banner. And once I've picked how I want my card to look with the cigar band wrapped around it, all I have to do is tuck in these extra bits and fold them to the back. And I'm trying to be careful not to do this too tight because I still want the recipient to be able to slide off the cigar band to reveal the notes inside. And then I will complete the card wrap with a little bit of liquid adhesive again. And those are my three tips in creating a really successful, very modern and visually interesting gates fold type card. So let's recap my three elements for a beautiful and successful center fold gatefold card. The first one is avoid adding bulk with extra papers. Go ahead and use your cover dies or your hot foil plates to create really interesting and shiny backgrounds. The second design tip is to harmonize symmetry with asymmetry. I think the temptation is to use your symmetrical dies or your circle dies, but I think it's important to incorporate some asymmetry to create visual interest on your card front, especially with your focal points. And then my last and final tip is to incorporate your sentiment onto the cigar band. This gives a really nice and interactive element to your card front. And I think this gives your recipient an opportunity to touch and hold the sentiment that you've given to them. My series encourages you to shop your existing Altenew stash and rekindle their love with newer releases. Perfect Pairings with JC airs on the Altenew channel every second and fourth Sunday of the month. Please make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for tuning in to this Perfect Pairing episode with me, and I'll see you in the next one. Hello crafters, Jen here. For more tips, techniques, tutorials, and to discover which paper crafting products are right for you, Subscribe to Altenew's YouTube channel. Make sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. Thanks for watching.